Welcome to module five, video number one. We're gonna talk about the elements and the fundamentals of link building. Again, as always, you may know some of this, but I highly recommend you watch all of this because there may be certain things that you don't know, and it's gonna absolutely screw up your progress and your understanding of the upcoming videos. We dive much more deeper and much more advanced into how exactly to do this. So again, starting off with the absolute fundamentals and the basics, let's go through the really, really really basic stuff in case you're new. And that is obviously, this is link building. So what is link building? Well, firstly, what is a link? Well, specifically talking about backlinks here, but you can see here, for example, this is a link and I'm sure you've seen a million of them before. And it's basically the text here that says fried chicken. That is a link. If you click that, it takes you to another page. And if it's a backlink, then it's gonna take you to another website altogether. That's the only difference here, right? So for example, if you have another website and you click that and it takes you to a different website, that is a backlink for the second website here, page number two here, because it has a link from another website. That's all a backlink is. It's very, very, very simple. And then going back to what we talked previously, you have like your spider, and that's gonna crawl through these links and find your pages. And also on top of that, it's also gonna pass page rank, which again is an internal metric that Google use. And we don't know exactly how that works, exactly how that's measured or anything like that, but we do know that it passes via links and we have other tools that kind of attempt to replicate that, which we'll talk more about as we get into the video. All you need to understand is that backlinks pass page rank and a lot of benefit or in like a much, much simpler way of explaining this is how I explain it to my clients. Backlinks are like votes for your website. That's it, okay? They're like votes for your website, so the more of them you have, and the better quality the source of that vote, i.e. some people are more trustworthy than others, then the better that vote is, and the better you'll rank. Very, very simple, okay? So your goal is very simple, is to get more votes, and to get more votes from higher quality sources, i.e. websites, but in the same case, it could be people or whatever else. That's all it is, it's just accumulating votes for your website, and by voting for you, they're vouching for you, they're saying, hey, they trust this website because they've chosen to link to you. And then going into, okay, what exactly is link building? Well, it's simple, it's just the art of acquiring these backlinks. Now, how exactly do you do that? Well, there's a few different ways you can really do it, but let's just kind of categorize them and simplify this, right? The first way is you can go ahead and you can build them. And I'll talk about this in a moment, how is it like an approach doing that? But you can also buy them, and this is something that is by far not condoned by Google and not something they'd recommend doing on any level. They're gonna tell you it's risky and all this sort of stuff. And to a degree, it absolutely can be, but it's also, well, significantly easier, so you have to make that decision yourself. You can also ask for them. Right, you could ask webmasters to link to you, you could ask your suppliers to link to you and various different things like that. So let me explain how exactly these things work. Okay, starting off with building them, right? So how can you build backlinks or links, right? Well, you can sign up to business directories, you can register your business there, right? This is called citations, usually your structured citations in the SEO world, where you go over to Yellow Pages, Yelp, and other business directories, including niche-specific ones, including local ones, and register your business, and most of them will allow you to insert a link to your website while creating that directory listing. You also have user contribution websites. Now, this is very, very open-ended. This could be social networks, where you can sign up for a Facebook page, and it's page and link to your business there. It could also be a forum where you sign up for a forum and include a link in your signature, in a post, in your profile, things like that. It could be a blog and you leave a comment and it has a link and then you leave a comment there, right? It could be a web 2.0 site like weebly.com, wix.com where you create like kind of a subdomain, create a piece of content on there, a mini site and include links there. These are all sites where you as a user contribute to the content and create your own content there. It could also be what we call in the SEO world private block networks. Now, I'm not really gonna dive deep into that in this course because frankly, it's an entire course on its own. But essentially, what is a private block network? It's a series of websites that you own specifically for link building. So rather than trying to ask, convince, and earn links from other websites, you essentially just create your own websites and you do this by using what we call age domains. And what that means is you just buy a domain and you just go spend $500, $1,000, whatever it is, on a domain that already has a bunch of backlinks pointing to it. So they've already built them, asked for them, earned them, everything like that. And you just buy their domain for $500. And it has say 100, 200, 300 links to it already. And then you use that to link to your own website, right? Now again, I'm not gonna cover that in this video. If you wanna learn more about this, I have a blog post, it's like 10,000 words or something crazy that explains exactly what these are, how to build them, how to use them, and all that good stuff. So you can go check that out on my site. 
But beyond that, it's basically just the idea of building them yourself. And in a way, it's kind of buying them to you because you have to buy the domain firstly. Now, moving on exactly to that, which is buying links. Let's explain how exactly that works. The first way, of course, is link services and sellers. So you probably, you probably own a website, had people email you, or if you're on LinkedIn, or even on Facebook, you joined like an SEO group, you got some people messaging you, like, hey, do you wanna buy some guest posts? Only $30, $50, and they give you this like big list of sites that they say that they can get guest posts on, or some types of links on. And generally speaking, my advice in, every single case when someone does that is to block them and don't give them a penny because the links probably suck. Likewise, you find people selling links on sites like Fiverr, and again, it's not actually $5 anymore, it's gonna be $20, $30, but again, generally speaking, unless it's something specific like structured citations or social profiles, something like that, they tend to suck, and even if they are those links, they're not really gonna help you rank, it's more just for adding some sort of diversification effort into your backlink profile and just trust, which we'll talk about, again, as we get further into the video. You can also pay webmasters, and this is what usually people refer to when they say buy links today. What this means is rather than trying to convince someone and ask them to link to you, you just say to them, hey, can I give you $30? Can I give you $50? Whatever you want. And ask them to link to your website. That could be either within an existing article or it could mean like you guest post. But that's basically what it means to pay webmasters. It is by far the easiest method when coupled with the ask method that we're gonna talk about next. You can also, as previously, buy age domains. Now you can use these, obviously, for a private blog network as we discussed before, which is how you build your own websites on top of these, then link to yours. But you can also buy these and use them directly as your own website. Again, this isn't something I do for clients by any stretch of the imagination, but for your own websites and experiments, it's pretty fun to kind of play around with this stuff. You can also buy age domains and 301 redirect them. We talked about this a little bit in the technical SEO and on-page SEO module. A 301 redirect is just a permanent redirect from another website to yours. Again, this takes a little bit more skill and more practice. It's not for beginners, but it is something that you should know and it's something that's kind of, again, fun to play around with. Where you buy an age domain, it has a bunch of backlinks already, then you redirect it into your own website and that can provide a massive boost in rankings if it works and if it's done correctly. It's risky, it's not something I'd ever do for a client, but again, it's a pretty fun thing to play around with. You can also ask for backlinks. Now there's numerous ways of approaching this and we'll talk about this in the next video, but it's short, you basically email them and try and convince them and ask them to include a link to you. Now this can be, hey, can I write a blog post for your site as in a guest post for your website? Or you do the skyscraper technique where the basic gist of it is, and again, we'll dive into it, is you create a taller skyscraper. What does that mean? It means if someone has this really big skyscraper and you come along and say, hey, I have a bigger one, that if someone's linking to this one, it's pretty appealing to link to yours instead. And a basic idea translates to content because if someone has this really good blog post and you come across and you make one five times better, well, they're gonna be pretty convinced rather than link to them or on top of linking to them, why not link to you also? That is, in a nutshell, what the skyscraper technique is. You also have broken link building where you basically, again, to try and earn their trust a little bit and help them out a little bit, you point out, hey, you have a broken link here. Also, I have another piece of content which kind of replaces what you were linking to previously. So rather than delete the link, why not, you know, from your link, you know? And then you also have digital PR, which stands for public relations, which is, you know, your typical old school PR type stuff, trying to promote your brand and get attention from new sites and bigger sort of niche sites in your industry. But there's actually one other way you can do this. So these ways are kind of directly how you can go out there and build links, but you can also just acquire links. And we're gonna talk about this also, which is basically you can earn them, right? So let's say you just create a really, really good piece of content. Now you can absolutely double this down with asking them also, but you're also fine. If you just create a really good piece of content and you promote that content naturally, not doing any sort of ask or anything like that, you would just naturally acquire links. It's gonna be slow, it's gonna take a long time, but this can absolutely happen. You can also interview people because if I interview you on my show, you're pretty inclined to share that, if nothing else from just an egotistical point of view, where, hey, look, I was featured on this show, and then you include a link and I get the benefit of that link. 
You can also, of course, if you build up your own brand, your expertise, your authority, things like that, people can ask you to contribute to their website, right? I've contributed to other websites in a guest post capacity and roundups and things like that, not because I've emailed them and asked, because they asked me and I'm sure, why not? Let me, let me help them out. Let me create a piece of content. Let's promote my brand further and let's also get a link at the same time as doing that. You can also do things like, you know, hosting an event and just other like brand and marketing first approaches. Again, if you're doing this delivery to get a link, then it's more of the Aston approach. But if you're doing this to promote your brand and further grow your business and just marketing in general without really intending to get a link and as a byproduct, you just happen to get links, that kind of falls into the earn them category. Now that basically covers how exactly you would acquire these links. And the thing you really, really need to know is essentially that the more quality referring domains you have, the better you will rank. Now, what exactly is referring domain? Because we didn't actually cover that already. Well, if you ever look at a tool like Ahrefs, you'll see both the backlinks and the referring domains. And referring domains in almost all cases will be lower. And the reason it's lower, because if I have a page and I have two links on that page and both of them link to your website, that is two backlinks. However, it is just one referring domain because only one website is linking with those two backlinks, right? It doesn't matter if I have 100 links on my site and different blog posts and that point into your website, it could be 100 backlinks, but it's only one referring domain. So this is generally a much more effective way of measuring the number of backlinks you have by not actually looking at the backlinks, but looking at the number of referring domains. And then also, as we mentioned here, the quality of said referring domains, because quality is a very, very important aspect of this. In fact, to quote John Mueller from Google himself, let me just read this to you guys. I would tend not to focus on the total number of backlinks or the number of domain links because we, as in Google, look at links in a very different way. The total number does not matter. You could go off and create millions of links across millions of websites and we could just ignore them. Or there could be one really good link from one website out there that is for us a really important sign that we should treat this website as something that is relevant, maybe from a big news site's homepage. Right. Now, again, I would not take what Guy will say as gospel by any means whatsoever, but I wholeheartedly agree with what he said in that it's not just quantity of links. You can go out there and use tools, and I used to do this years back, and we build like, you know, 10,000 links a day, and it's just spammy blog comments and forum posts and things like that, and today that would do absolutely nothing. If anything, it could even have a negative effect. Whereas in certain cases, you can build a very, very small number of links and have a huge impact because, again, quality becomes important. Now, it's not quality over quantity, it's quality and quantity. I would personally strive to have as many high quality links as I possibly can, but the point still stands is that you want as many links as you can that are of a decent quality. That is really what matters. Again, specifically referring domains, not 100 links to one page, but the number of referring domains that are quality. Very, very simple. Now, that's all well and good me saying, okay, you need to get more quality links, but well, what exactly does that mean? How do you measure the quality of a link? Well, let me give you the easy version and then we'll get into the complex version, okay? This is the easy version. Would you rather have a link from the BBC or from some random website called darylcanfixit.com, right? In almost all cases, you're gonna say you prefer having a link from the BBC, and in almost all cases, you'd be absolutely correct. And the way I like to explain this, just to make this very, very simple, is that the more difficult a backlink is to replicate, the higher the quality of that backlink. That is the absolute simplest understanding of what a quality backlink is. Let me explain. Getting featured in an article from the BBC is gonna be extremely, extremely difficult to pull off. Right? Whereas if you go onto a website, say jarrowconfixer.com, I presume not a real website, and there's a blog post there and you leave a comment in that blog, well, guess what? That is a bad link because anyone can go on there, leave a comment and get a link from that website. Or if a website has a forum you can create a link on, again, anyone can go out there and replicate it. Or even if it's a normal blog and you did a guest post on the site, it's much, much, much more difficult to again, get a feature from the BBC than it is to get a feature from darylcanfixit.com. So generally speaking, just to make it nice and simple, the harder to replicate that backlink, the higher the quality of that backlink. Now that's the simple answer, but let me give you the advanced answer, which is, Here's all the factors that I think are important. There is authority of the website, authority of the page, 
relevance of, again, the website, and then also relevance of the page. Then you have relevance of the anchor text, location of the link within the content, whether it's no follow or do follow, and the page that's linked to, i.e. the destination. Right, so let me explain what each of these means and how each of these can be, well, influenced because that's what we're in a game of doing with SEO. The first one is the authority of the website, and that's pretty much what we explained already. If you look at the BBC, well, that's a massive, massive authority site, whereas you look at Jarrah Can Fix It with its sketchy looking logo, then it's not really a legit good quality site, right? So BBC is obviously much more of an authority website. Now, this comes down to, again, the old school term of page rank. And page rank, again, is simply that measurement of how much an authority a page and a website is. So again, this page, the BBC, is gonna have a much, much higher page rank than Darrow can fix it, okay? Now, unfortunately, as mentioned, we do not have access to page rank anymore. That, again, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You will still use it internally, apparently, but we don't know what it is or how exactly they're measuring it any longer. So instead, we're gonna use tools like Moz and Ahrefs or SEMrush or various different tools like that. And they have these different metrics, like on Moz, they call it domain authority. On Ahrefs, they call it domain rating. And on SEMrush, they call it authority score. What are these tools? What are they analyzing? Well, do you have different ways of calculating it? And none of them are actually correct, if correct means exactly how Google would calculate it. Of course, they're not correct, but they are indicators and things to look into. And they're basically, again, trying to measure page rank in a similar sort of way. Again, does that mean they are 100% right? And this is exactly how Google measure it? No, in that case, every single one of them is wrong but they're not wrong, they're just different ways of measuring it and different ways of getting an idea of how much an authority, i.e. how high the page rank is for these different websites. Again, this is not Google's metrics, but they are useful indicators for how much an authority a website is. So if you ever hear this term people throwing around like domain authority, that's all it is. Domain authority is a measure of the volume and the quality of backlinks pointing to a website. That's it's, all it is, it's very, very simple. Again, this may be calculated in slightly different ways. So on one side, it may be higher than others and so on. But again, the goal is to measure the authority of the domain, which usually, again, they're gonna look at the volume and quality of the backlinks that this website has. The other thing to consider, though, is that you absolutely cannot trust these metrics 100%. Meaning just because a website has a high domain authority or domain rating does not mean that it is a good link. In fact, what many SEOs do is they like to look at the organic keywords, the organic traffic numbers, and really check that this is a real website that has real traffic. The idea behind that is, realistically, these metrics like domain authority, domain rating can be gamed, meaning you can do things to artificially increase them despite not really being an authority site. This is part of the game again. However, if you look more into the organic traffic levels, and this site has a decent amount of traffic, and ideally that traffic is growing, i.e. is increasing every single month, then it's probably a good sign because if your traffic is increasing, then it shows that Google liked this website, and if Google liked the website, then it probably has a high page rank in their eyes specifically, which is actually what matters, not any of these individual tools. So again, don't blindly just say, okay, this website has DR30, it must be pretty good, it must be a decent link, because it could be absolutely terrible. So again, Again, you want to look further into that. You want to look at the actual backlinks themselves. And a good sort of cheap, lazy way of doing that is to also just look at the organic traffic. And if it has a decent amount of traffic, you know, on the low end, at least a thousand visits a month, then it's a better sign than especially if it has absolutely none. You also have the authority of the page. Take a look at these two options here. Which one would you prefer to have a link from? Option number one, which is the homepage of my website, or option number two, which is a podcast or a blog post basically on my website instead. Which would you prefer to have a link from? In almost all cases, again, you'd prefer, again, if you had the choice, which you probably don't, but if you had the choice, you prefer option one, a link from the homepage. And the reason why is because it has a higher level of authority. My homepage has a decent number of backlinks. This specific blog post probably has one, maybe two. So it has a significant lower amount of authority on this specific page, so it's a less effective link, again, from an authority perspective. 
Now, how exactly do you measure this? Well, again, if you look at these tools, you'll see things like URL rating or UR in Ahrefs, and you see things like PA, which is page authority in Moz, and these are, again, attempts at measuring what is the rating, the authority of this specific page. The other thing to consider is essentially that this comes from links. And this could be backlinks to the specific page that we covered previously, but it could also be internal links. So if this page has a really, really high page depth, as we discussed in the technical SEO module, this is gonna have a pretty low page or URL rating. However, if it has a ton of internal links pointing to it, like say the homepage, then it's gonna have a very, very high URL rating. So these just kind of influence all these different factors. But generally speaking, the higher the page authority, the better that page again to get a link from. You also have relevance of the site. So it's not only authority. Remember back to the very first video, I introduced you to a concept of authority, relevance, and trust. And you want to simultaneously hit all of these different factors. So we covered authority, and that is great. But if you have a really, really strong authority link and it doesn't have any relevance versus a site that is not nearly as much an authority, but is highly, highly relevant, you may actually get a better boost from the relevant link versus the authority link, right? So here's an example to explain that here. Would you prefer to have a link from the BBC or bodybuilding.com if you have a health and fitness website? Personally, depending on which page it's located on, I may actually prefer the bodybuilding.com link. Despite it not being as much an authority as the BBC, it is a major, probably the biggest authority site in the health niche from my lack of experience in the health niche. Right, so it is a huge, huge site in that niche, so it has a ton of authority in that niche specifically, and more importantly, is massively, massively relevant to our own website. So the relevance factor also plays a factor, and again, that's looking at the overall website, but you also have relevance of the page. If you sold a healthy snack, like a protein bar or something like that, would you prefer to have a link from option one or option two? Well, option one, you have a look at the blog post title, is seven healthy foods to take on your summer road trip. And option number two is something about a Tebow curl, right? So if you're selling healthy snacks, you prefer to have a link from the page that is about healthy foods and healthy snacks rather than something about curling. Right? So you want to have relevant page links also. So yeah, great. Look, no matter what, if you have a link from bodybuilding.com, you have a health and fitness website, you take the link. It's a good link. It's a relevant site. But also, if you can get a relevant page, that is even better because then the whole page content is, again, relevant to the topic of your website. We talked about this again on the internal links video. We did a little game show, and we guessed what the page is about based on the referring pages, URLs, right? So next up, we have relevance of anchor text. And if you don't know what anchor text is, it's simply the text of the link. So if I look at this link again, then the text of the link, i.e. the anchor text, is fried chicken. So let me ask you again, the game show again, let me ask you a question. Would you prefer option one or option two? If you have a website about fried chicken, you're selling fried chicken, something like this, would you prefer the anchor text says delicious fried chicken or would you prefer it just says click here? Now again, both of these could be pretty good links based on all the other factors, but which would you prefer only looking at this factor? Well, I prefer option number one. I want to have a relevant anchor text that suggests the topic of my page because I know looking at this anchor text only that this page is about fried chicken versus looking at option two where it could be about absolutely anything. So relevance absolutely matters. Now again, just to be clear with actually this but also everything else, you want diversity. Meaning that if every single time someone links to your page they say fried chicken, it's unnatural. It just doesn't happen in the real world if you earn the links and do anything to achieve them. All right, so we like to kind of do like a more scientific breakdown here. We have to look at the competitors. We have to see, okay, how many of them are targeted, i.e. they have the word fried chicken in it, the phrase fried chicken in it, because that's the keyword, but also how many of them are just, you know, the brand name? How many of them are just related to cooking and oil and different topics like that? How many are the URLs, so example.com? How many are empty or miscellaneous? Again, like previously, click here, 
visit website and so on. Now we'll talk about how exactly you do this in the next video, but I just want to explain that while this is again important and all these fins are important, you don't just want to do a single clear cut approach like every single time linking with the text fried chicken because it is very, very unnatural. And again, what we're trying to do, even if we're building links or buying them or anything like that, is we want to replicate a natural profile. Even if you're going out there and doing this pretty clean and white hat, which is going out there and achieving backlinks by asking people and things like that and creating really good content, not paying anyone, it's still easy to over-optimize your anchor text profile and things like that. So again, just be cautious of this. We'll talk about it in the next video, but I just want to be clear in case you don't watch the next video that you absolutely need to be careful with this type of thing. Next up, we have location of the link. Take a look at these two options here. So number one is from a guest post I did on Ahrefs where I wrote a guest post about how to get clients from cold emailing. And option two is a blog post Ahrefs wrote up about the best or top of different popular SEO blogs. And I got featured in that, as you can see here in that little links here. Now, which one would you prefer as a link? I would prefer the second one, and let me explain why. Now, the first one can be absolutely great for traffic, and it probably was, I didn't really check, to be honest, um, but it's great for traffic because a lot of people read this, they know I wrote it, and they wanna check out my site and who I am. So from a traffic perspective, that can also be pretty great, but realistically, even the second one is also great for traffic also, because they're recommending my site as a good SEO blog. But I prefer the second one, and for the simple reason is the location of the link. The first link you're looking at right here is basically an about the author section, which Google know that, and it's not nearly as effective as a standard contextual link, which is within content. So you can see here in the second option, it's actually citing my website, right? They're saying he started out as a PBN guy, here's a super extensive PBN guy. So they're citing my content, which is a really, really good thing, and a much, much more effective link in my eyes than in the first one, where it's basically just kind of promoting myself a little bit, and it's not really as good as that citation link. So again, the location of the link is very, very key. Now that's one example where if you're in guest post, for example, you wanna link not in your author section at the bottom, you wanna link within the actual content itself, but also you have your overall sections on the page. If you remember, we talked about this again in the internal linking video, where we're talking about link weight by location. And I specifically said that I prefer content links in almost all cases, because they're just far better. But again, for internal links, navigation links are pretty great also. And sidebar links are pretty weak, but they exist. And then you also have footer links, and again, they pretty much suck, but they do exist and they're better than nothing, right? So if you're going out there and building links, you really don't want footer links or sidebar links, and you probably can't get navigation links for backlinks you really want to focus specifically on content, and again, specifically within the content, not in the author bio section or anything like that. Next up, we have no follow versus do follow. Now, I do believe you covered this already, but I also want to cover things like rel equals sponsored and other things like that, where basically there are other ways of saying, hey, don't pass any benefits to this link. Now, what you really want here is option number one, where it doesn't specify no follow, sponsored, or anything like that. And the reason for that is, again, they're recommending, in that case, that search engines follow this link, they crawl this link, and they pass benefits through to this link. Versus in the latter one, where option two here, it says rel equals sponsored, where they're saying, hey, this is a sponsored link, so you know, like, don't pass any benefits through this link. And they're saying, like, no follow, they're saying, hey, don't crawl this link, or we recommend not crawling this link. Again, does that mean that no follow or sponsored links are absolutely worthless and they do absolutely nothing for you? No, it doesn't mean that. But generally speaking, you want to do follow links. And especially if you're putting in a lot of effort, and especially even more so if you're paying for this, you absolutely do need to specify that this is a do follow, not a no follow or sponsored or other type of link. And the final factor you want to consider is the page link to, i.e. the destination page. If you want to rank this page here, which is women's seamless leggings, which page do you want to link to? Do you want to link to a blog post, which is about your new seamless collection, highlighting some colors or options and new things added to that collection? Or do you want to link directly to the page you actually want to rank? Many people will say that you should get links to blog post is something, and then have internal links from the blog post to the page you intend on ranking. And I wholeheartedly do not agree with that, okay? Now, I will say that if you can't get links to that category, if you can't get a link to the exact page that you want to rank, but you can get a link to an internal page, like a blog post, something like that, and has internal links to that, that is still effective and it can still work. However, if you have the choice in every single case, 
get the link to the page you actually want to rank because it will make a difference. Now in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to measure this, when to do this, because it's a little bit more nuanced than what you said, but generally speaking again, if you can get a link to the page you actually want to rank, which is option two here, take it. If not, then take what you can get, get a link to a blog post or a resource page, something like that, an internal link to it, but ideally get a link to the page that you intend on ranking. So in summing that up, this is the link quality factors to measure the quality of a link. It's the authority of the site, the authority of the page, the relevance of the site, the relevance of the page, the relevance of the anchor text, location of the link within the content, no follow or do follow, and the page link too. Or to put this into SEO terms and how exactly to optimize for this, you have the following factors. Get links from authority sites, and ideally if you can control it, authority pages, if you can't control that, then obviously you can build links and promote this page specifically to get more links and authority to the page. You can also control that by creating a really, really, really good piece of content for them, so they decide to internal link to it more often. You also wanna focus on relevant sites, and again, ideally relevant pages, which if you're creating, say, a guest post, then you can control that by creating a really relevant piece of content to your website. You also want relevant anchor text for your link. You wanna have contextual links, again, links within the content. You want do follow links, and ideally, you wanna to link to the money page. Now again, sometimes you can't control all these factors, and sometimes you wanna mix things up a little bit for diversification purposes, but this is how you'd influence and get the perfect link. Now that wraps up this video. In the next video, I'm gonna go through how exactly you do this. How do you reach out to webmasters? How do you get these links? How do you determine the optimal anchor text and authority and all these different factors like that? I'm gonna cover exactly how to do all of that and start building links in the next video. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you made it to the end, please do me a favor, tap the little like button below to show that you're enjoying the course so far. We're almost, almost finished. I'm super excited to get this thing done. I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. And with that said, I will see you in my next video in the next couple of days.